The Eton Moors are a tricky place to write about. The Moors, as we typically call them, are better known in Lotro than they are in really any other Tolkien adaptation. Since 2007, it has been the bane of those players who crave PvP action. First, because it's not really PvP, it's PvMP. And second, because it is one of only two zones that allow it. We don't talk about Osgiliath. The geography of the beautifully done zone is generally reduced to short acronyms like TA, as in GET TO TA! And the land itself is disregarded as anything but a battleground upon which to spill the blood of the enemy. In the text, it is first mentioned by Aragorn in Flight to the Ford, and even Strider the Ranger, the greatest huntsman and traveler of his day, says, That is troll country, and little known to me. So if Strider knew little of it, and it is scarcely discussed in any of the books, what hope have I? Let's turn over a few stones, sniff out a couple troll footprints, and see what turns up. It's Edmores, and you are listening to Beneath Your Feet. As I said, we're first introduced to this place while Strider is leading the hobbits from Bree to Rivendell, taking the scenic route to avoid detection by ringwraiths. After crossing the last bridge, they turn north off the road to seek shelter in the jagged, rocky wilderness of the Trollshaws. If any of you have ventured in those parts, even in the tame sanctity of Lotro, you know how hard it can be to find your way. And so four hobbits, one of whom has just been stabbed, one ranger and one pony are left to scramble up and down rocky hills and find a path through thorn and bramble to safety. The context of the earlier quote is when they begin to go too far north and are about to cross over into the Eton Moors. Strider references the Eton Dales, which is part of the moors nearing the mountains that is apparently completely infested by trolls. He wants to avoid going there, for though it is a visible and viable path to Rivendell, it is much too far out of the way and dangerous. Presumably, this is the area from which our old favorites Bert, Tom, and Bill came down from before terrorizing the countryside and meeting their end when Dawn took them in The Hobbit. Most of what we know about the Eton Moors is in the names used to reference it. According to Tolkien Gateway, Eton is derived from the Old English word for giant or troll, Moor is, of course, a wide expanse of hilly land that is mostly barren and rocky. Anyone who's read Sherlock Holmes or really any other British fiction should be familiar with that term. The term troll fells is also thrown around when Eton Moors comes up. Fells is much like a moor, hilly uplands presumably near mountains. And finally, Eton Dales is mentioned as a part of the moors. That is another term for the Eton Moors themselves. Etten again means troll or giant, dale is another word for dell or valley, so in short, Etten moors are moors, and dales where trolls live. Simple enough, but even simple terms can be confusing, because the book makes no clear distinction between the two, Etten moor or Etten dale, so most sources have merged the two as some kind of sister land, moors being the jagged, elevated spaces leading towards Mount Graham, and Dales being those lowlands, the final dip before Middle-earth rises again into the Misty Mountains. The Moors come up again in the text after their arrival at Rivendell, where Gandalf describes his own harrowing journey to the last homely house. Shadowfax left the Grey Pilgrim on his own, and so he followed the river Harwell, or Loudwater, which we've all seen as we cross from the Lone Lands into the Trollshaws, northwards into its sources in the Etten Moors. He then came back down in the foothills of the Misty Mountains to reach Rivendell from the north. It takes him 14 days from Weathertop. Two weeks on foot. Grey Wanderer, indeed. We players, sadly, do not have that option, for the Moors are truly an island in the world of Lotro. It can only be reached by swift travel. 
There is no way in or out save by loading screen. Once there, though, we are treated to a challenging place of player versus player combat. Lionethel, an elf of Rivendell, is not content to trust the defense of the Hidden Valley to secrecy, no sir. Not with an Angmarim army on the loose. So she calls upon a hardy band of fighters to take the stabbing to the enemy. And that, friends, is really all there is to the story of the Etnamors. But it is, really, a nicely done landscape. The world builders took a few cues from the lore as usual, and if we look at the map, the place that stands out the most is far to the north, Arador's End. Arador was the grandfather of Aragorn and father of Arathorn. He was chieftain of the Dúnedain from 2910 to 2930 of the Third Age. We know little of this late lord, save that he was captured by the hill trolls of the Ettendales and slain. And perhaps this is why Aragorn knows little of those lands. I can't say I'd be in a rush to get to know the place where my grandfather was brutally killed. We get a glimpse into this little piece of history in the introductory portion of the Epic Quest, Volume 3, where we take on the role of a ranger gone to save his lord only to find him slain. It is a sad tale, but so are many of the tales of Middle-earth, especially those of the Edain and their descendants, where the enemy hounded them until the end. Arador's End is notably the site of a frost-covered river, the earlier spring of the River Horwell. This name, along with Myth Eiffel, its elvish translation, simply means a grey spring. Hor can also refer to Hor Frost, so perhaps this ice over place takes its name from that fact. Neighboring Arador's End are the steps of Graham, where all monster players begin their journeys. This is where things get a little sticky because the western boundaries of the Etten Moors were never really clearly defined, nor is the precise location of Mount Graham. There is a spur that comes off the Misty Mountains to create the northernmost border of the Moors, and Lotro is presuming that this is where Mount Graham was. And so as we move further northwards in the zone, so we should arrive at Mount Graham. Beyond this little range, keeping along the edge of the Misty Mountains, we would reach Angmar and Karn Doom, the denizens of which create the principal point of conflict in the Moors, but we'll get to that later. Mount Graham was said to be the home of a large group of goblins led by one Gullfimble. You ought to know Gullfimble, for that is where we get the term golf. When the goblins of Mount Graham came down to invade the Shire, they were bested at the Battle of Greenfields by an army of hobbits led by Bandabrus Took, otherwise known as the Bull Roarer. He was the grandsire on the Took side of our Bilbo. And from Graham's foot south along the eastern side of the Harwell River is all territory of the enemy. We see towers like Lugazog occupied by the forces of Angmar, and that is because of how close the Moors are to Angmar proper. In Lotro, Angmar has again become a power, and so, geographically speaking, we would see them in a place like the Moors. They might be interested in taking this place because it is so close to Rivendell, though they would not know the exact location of Imladris, and the Moors hold a special place of shame for the Witch King. Angmar, as he was sometimes referred to, had been wreaking havoc on the north and middle earth of the Third Age on behalf of his master. His aim was to wipe out the Dúnedain and put an end to the North Kingdoms, and he was largely successful. The final showdown happened at Fornost, where he led his armies to finish the job he'd begun. Cutting out the bit about Erinor, the Witch King was run off in shame by Glorfindel, who had led the elf host to help the Dúnedain out. And the bottom line is, you don't mess with Glorfindel. In his flight, the Witch King passed through the Etten Moors and found his way back to Mordor. This was also the point where Glorfindel prophesied that the end of the Witch King would not be achieved by the hands of man. The towers and fortresses that dominate the landscape of the Moors are hard to justify inside the lore. The place was never a part of any of the kingdoms of Arnor and, as I mentioned, the only kingdom that might have built in that area was Angmar. One theory, perhaps, could be that the hillmen of Rudauer tried their hand at some hasty construction. Likewise, the settlement of hobbits along the Horwell, simply called Horhallow, would not likely have been there. 
The excellent Atlas of Middle-earth illustrates the migration of hobbits into Eriador, and we see some strains of hobbits taking the northern passes over the Misty Mountains and coming close to the Etnmores, but likely they would not have stayed there for fear of the trolls and the more northerly climate. But that's just speculation on my part. Admittedly, it is fun to get into PvP action among the holes and houses of a Shire-like village. But all of that is neither here nor there, for the Moors serve as an exemplar of what can be done with the fringes of Tolkien's work. Certainly he did not intend it to be a never-ending battlefield, but its location is justifiable, and sometimes to make a game work, you just have to mess with stuff. We Lotro players should be used to this by now. So while the Moors are not a Shire, or Rivendell, or Moria, places with deep histories reaching back into the deeps of early ages, they go to show that no place, or very few places, in Middle-earth leave nothing to be found beneath your feet. Thank you for listening to Beneath Your Feet. For more information on the show, please visit anchor.fm slash L-O-T-R-O-B-Y-F. From there, you can find links to share the show across all platforms. You can message me or send me a voicemail, which might just be included on the show. You can also leave a tip. Any support, a review, a share, a dollar is all very much appreciated. You can also join me live each month for the Beneath Your Feet research stream on twitch.tv slash Lotro stream. With each stream, we dive deep into a particular region of Lotro, hunt for Easter eggs and details, and talk lore for the upcoming podcast episode. Today's music comes from the Lord of the Rings online soundtrack and Fintroll. This episode was written and read by me. My name is Shoreless. We'll see you next time when we go Beneath Your Feet.